We're going to talk about now for the general admin settings. In here, you can change values like the login name. If you don't want to use the default admin username to log into your admin portal, you can change it here to a different one. You can set up the admin email. This is the email that is going to be notified about any admin alert that happens in your file file system. So make sure to change this after installation. You can enable two-factor authentication for the admin logins from here. You can reset the default password. <clears throat> you can set the statistic API key. This is useful if you're integrating, for example, any external monitoring system like Nagios. You can set up the key here, and then you can make the calls to the file cloud server using this key. There are a few other settings important here in regards to accounts. You can decide to allow accounts to be created automatically, true, false, or default. The default is false. And by doing this, you will be able to, for example, allow your users to create accounts when they are creating a share. We're going to check those settings on the policies in a different, in a different class. You can allow the users to change the default password uh, or deny it. You want them to use the password that you create from here. For the setting that allows account signups, and we want to allow what type of accounts when they are creating a new account, on, when creating a share, for example. Normally, we recommend setting it, up, setting it up to the number three value, which means you're going to allow your full account users or your guest users to create limited user accounts when they are creating a share. You have a few checkboxes here that are going to be related to to all these emails and all these accounts that are going to be created automatically. For example, you can send an approval of pending emails. You can send the welcome or verification emails. You can send the approval emails to the users. You can send the admin summary emails. This is an email that is sent every single day to this email address that is going to contain all the activities that happen on the day, how many shares, how many downloads, how many uploads, all that is included in the admin summary. You can check for updates in the dashboard. You're going to see if there's a new version of file cloud available for you. You can enable the metrics. This is going to tell file cloud uh, just the general information of your file cloud server. For example, how many users or how many downloads or how many uploads or how many files are stored in your, in your file cloud server. There is no other information or there no any private information sent to the file cloud server. And if you're concerned about security about this, you can disable it from here. You can change the session timeout for the admin portal from this section. By default, it's 30 minutes, but you can change it to a different value. If an account is locked, uh, you can decide to send an email to the user, send a, an email to the user and the admin, or no, uh, do not send in any email alert. You can decide as well if you want to show the geographical IP chart that is on the dashboard. By default, is it's false, but you can change it to true. When you change it to true, it's going to go into the default GYP server URL that we have configured on our side. This is going to allow you to identify the IP addresses and associate them to a country. And this is regularly updated every day, so you can identify not just by IP address, but also by country, which is also useful in other settings like data leak prevention that we're going to look in a different class. And you can decide how frequently do you want to check if there are new association tables from the server. Uh, by default, it's 24 hours, but you can change it if you need it more frequent or less frequent. There's also another setting here that is regarding the audit settings. We're going to cover audits in a different class, but you can see here that you can disable a recording any of the audit information. You can change it to request, which is going to log all of the requests, but not the full response. Or you can decide if you want to keep all the information of every transaction happening on File Cloud. Other than this, uh, there's also another important setting regarding the audit records, and that is after a few months or a year, the audit record database is going to increase to a, a large volume of information that is going to uh, probably slow down your system. So if you want to 
make sure that that never happens and you want to send all your audit records to a different file, you can decide that you want to auto archive the audit database. How frequently? Let's say every 15 days, 30 days, 60 days, you can decide your setting in here. But that information is not going to be deleted. It's going to be saved into a CSV file with all the information that you see on the audit records, but you can check it on these files at any point and you decide where in your server or in your network do you want to store those audit record archives.